Hey guys, it's MJ, the student tech tree, and in this video, I want to look at exchange traded funds and the difference that they have with exchange traded derivatives. I'm also going to look at over the counter derivatives, but what I thought of instead of doing it like a lecture where I just show you the theory, I thought let's actually go to the web page and let's actually see what these things are. So remember in the last video we spoke about indices and benchmarks. Well, an exchange traded fund is a listed security, so it's on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or on your stock market, um, which acts just like a portfolio and it's based completely on the index. So what you have is, let's say the Satrix 40, this is quite a popular one. What this one is, it's they say we're gonna invest your money um, according to the index on the top 40 shares. So if we see here, this is all their, their little information over here, you can see They've got 15% of the fund in NASPERS, 13% in uh, South African breweries, that's like the beer company, BHT Billington, British American Tobacco. You know, they've, they've allocated it according to market cap. And we can actually see, you know, how they've been split up and all those type of things. Surprisingly, they have been doing quite bad, badly. I mean, after a year, you would have lost 5%, which is not good. Um, you can see in the long run they do make nice money, but yeah, lately there has been some turmoil in the market. But what this exchange trader fund is doing is instead of you going to the stock market and saying, I actually don't know which share I want to buy, um, instead of you going and buying each of the top 40 shares in a direct proportion and trying to do you know 40 of these various trades and doing the calculations, you just give your money to the Satrix top 40 and they've created this thing known as an exchange traded fund, which acts like a share that controls other shares. So it's a really great way for someone who's not say a savvy investor to just get total exposure on the market. What is quite interesting though, is uh, remember in the previous video, we did look at uh, equally weighted um, indices, and I see that there's this company called Gridrod Bank, which I've actually never heard of has actually made a top 40 equally weighted um, ETF, which is quite, yeah, quite exciting. Um, funnily enough, it has done even worse. So despite uh, there being studies done that show that these funds perform better, when we actually look at the real information, we're seeing that <laughs> they've been performing quite badly. I mean, check it that minus 11%, that is huge. But very interesting to see how the sector breakdown changes between the equally weighted one and this one over here. This is our Satrix top 40. So look how the financials make just a small little chunk there. But now when we equally weighted, there's quite a lot of financial companies. So each of them will take an equal chunk. Look how much financials jumps up like that. And this is interesting because which one actually looks more diversified? This one, the one that is weighted by market cap, appears to be more diversified than the one that is equally weighted, which again goes against um, you know conventional thinking and one of the reasons for creating these exchange traded funds. And this is the lovely thing about finance is you can learn something you know that says this is orange, but then you go and look at it in the real world and you see no, it's actually blue. You know, it's a direct uh, contradiction of the notes. So that's why it's always important when studying finance to look at the actual stuff going on because, yeah, this is supposed to be more diversified, but looking at that little thing over there, you're less diversified by sector. You will be more diversified by uh, individuals. So here we see NASPERS holding 15%, where on this one here, I mean, each person only has 2%, but you see, now there's Standard Bank, there's Ned Bank, there's all the financial guys um, get incorporated there. Anyway, let's uh, let's close these things. Do, do, do. What else should we should we check out? There's the Satrix Swix. Swix, I think that's how you pronounce it. Now this one is, it's been so the top forty is by market cap. This one is the shareholder weighted. So some shares have been allocated to strategic holdings, which means they're not available for the public to trans uh, transact on. So what the Swix does, it only uses the shares that the public can purchase. So it's quite interesting to see how, how it's a little bit different. Um, 
funnily enough, it still does just as badly in the short term. And I mean, that does look kind of similar. Do we still have, which one is this one? Yeah, this is the equally weighted one. Um, so the Swix is quite a quite an interesting one. They love asking exam questions about this because, like I said, most textbooks um, talk about the all share or the top 40. The Swix is a South African one. So when studying for the exams, know that. Um, but let's maybe talk about the rest of the world. Let's see how America is doing because I know the majority of my viewers are from the US. Um, so let's go and check how how your guys um, ETF is doing. Uh, probably much better than us. So this is a South African product that just has exposure to the American shares. So if you want to invest in Apple and Microsoft and Johnson & Johnson, General Electric and you know all the big companies in the world, then you might be interested in this type of fund. Um, how have they been performing? They've been performing better than us. Look, I mean, only minus 1%. I mean, we were, after one year, we were minus 5%. So the American stock market has been doing well, although yeah, this, these last three months have not been good to us. Um, let's see another country. What other country should we check out? Should we check out the world? Let's see how the world's doing. How, so this is if you like, I want to have like as much diversification as possible. I want to get um, a lot of exposure. I think they all have a big, yeah, I was just about to say Apple. I mean, this is the world. And look at the American, yeah, this is the American one. So look at the top holdings of the American one, Apple, Exxon, Microsoft, Johnson. And then the world has Apple, Microsoft, Johnson, Johnson. So it's basically got the same um, top guys, although they do have smaller percentages. So the top five make up 5.9%, where here you've got 10%. So you're getting more diversification. I wish they would break up the sector, not just say foreign. I mean, you can't really draw much information from that. Although, look at the world. The world hasn't been doing that great either. Hey, um, so, so far, it looks like America, sorry, I'm jumping around a lot, is the best. But let's, let's maybe look at, um, let's look at another country. Should we check out, uh, let's check out the UK, after their whole little Brexit thing. Let's see if people overreacted and, Let's see. So HSBC, that is a bank. Oh, look, there's a British American Tobacco, which is also on the South African Stock Exchange. Um, as one of their top companies. Uh, Royal Dutch, BP, Glaxo. Okay, let's check how they're doing. Ooh, ooh that's terrible. <laughs> Mine is 13%. So it's weird. People put their money into these exchange traded funds because they think, you know, this is how it's an easy way to make an investment and make lots of money. But if you'd put your money in these things, especially this year, you will be crying. Um, so that's Britain, not doing too well. Let's see, we'll see Japan and then we will see um, Europe. So this is Japan. Japan's top shares are Toyota, um, SoftBank, also tobacco. Look, look at tobacco, which is interesting because a lot of this it's becoming a lot of these new funds called tobacco-free investments because people believe it is morally wrong to invest in a tobacco company, which is going to be very interesting because then they can't buy these, these shares. Oh, look how well Japan's been doing. Japan's been doing very nicely. Oh, that's, that's very cool. Um, so yeah, all done to Japan. Let's, um, let me just clear some of these at the top. Okay, let's check out Europe. What do we think Europe's going to do? I think they're probably going to do badly. Um, but I haven't seen these yet, so let's see. Okay, the top shares in um, Europe is Total, which I think is the petrol company. These guys, I'm not even going to try to pronounce them, but they're beer. They're also buying SA breweries. Um, that's a medicine company. That's a technology company. I don't know that one. If you, if you know who that is, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, yeah, Europe doing terribly. Uh, although not as bad as us, but yeah, we're doing horrendously bad. Um, so, I mean, this is quite a fun place to come. You can check out how, how everyone's doing. Let's check out property. So property is an interesting one. Um, do we think it's going up or do we think it's going down? Let's check. So this is South African property, so I'm just, just letting you know. Growth Point is one of our big uh, ones. High Prop, I remember looking at those. 
Let's see how they've done. Mm, not so bad. Not so bad. That's that's concerning. So yeah, South Africa. We're still the greatest company in the uh, greatest country in the world, despite us not doing too too well in the equity markets at the moment. Um, I mean, green. Does that mean like it's only like what like green companies? Let's see how they're doing. Um, they're probably doing even worse. Let's see. Oh no, they're not actually doing that bad, the green companies. So I think these are like the socially responsible ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a bit of a strange one. I don't know this this core share. Who, who are they? Anyway, let's look at um, one more. Which one should we look at? So APSA is a, a big bank in South Africa. It's got like a partnership going with Barclays. Um, so we can see they offer quite a few interesting ones. Um, let's look at the, the Gavi. So this is an index on South African government bonds. So let's say you wanted, you're like equities are doing bad. How have the bond market been doing? So you can see here 100% in South African bonds. Okay, did they do better or worse than equities? And look at that. Look at that. The bond market is doing better than the equity markets. That's very interesting, fascinating stuff that. Um, yeah, that is, wow. So maybe, no, I'm not letting you financial advice. Uh, <laughs> so that that is an interesting thing to see. Um, I don't know what MAPS means. Oh, so you can sometimes get growth uh, shares and value shares. Let's actually see which one's better. Okay, who do you think is better, growth or protect? Growth or protect, let's check. Okay, so this is the growth portfolio. So the growth portfolio has done, ooh, quite badly. Let's check it compared to the protect portfolio. This is the protect portfolio. Yeah, protect portfolio. They've probably done better in these bad market climates. Let's check, minus 2%, minus 1%. Yeah, minus three, minus five. Yeah. So the market has rewarded the, the people who have taken like the less volatile uh, assets, which is quite a, it's interesting. It tells you quite a bit about the market environment and what's going on and stuff like that. Let's see what else we can check out. Um, the mid cap, that's quite a fun one. So these are the companies that aren't, you know, aren't your large cap, they aren't your big uh, businesses in South Africa, these are like the, more the middle guys, there's less liquidity in this market, more volatility, so what do we think? I'm thinking they went down, but I don't know, let's see, let's see. Yeah, they went down, but not as bad as the large caps, so that is quite interesting, We've got quite a nice diversification of um, sectors, although, yeah, they're very small in the telecom sector. Okay, so, sorry, we're supposed to be comparing exchange-traded funds uh, to exchange-traded derivatives. So, I mean, one of the things that you can see about exchange-traded funds is you don't have a lot of choices. You know, you kind of have, I mean, it fits on a page. Those are, and a lot of these are like the same, the top 40, top 50, and then Satrix also got the top 40, they've also got the top 40. So a lot of them are actually like the same thing. So... You don't have a lot of options when it comes to your exchange traded funds. We see that they do sometimes have high concentration, a low amount of constituents, uh, which means they give quite a low spread. The nice thing about them is that there is no need for active management. Once you buy these things, they just keep running like a normal portfolio. Um, you know, dividends are received, the derivatives that they have are rolled upon. Uh, like I said, it behaves like a portfolio, it's very tradable, you can buy, you can sell quite easily. They are similar to exchange traded derivatives, okay? But where these things are actually buying the physical shares, an exchange traded derivative is more synthetic. It's giving you just the exposure to the price without actually purchasing it, which means it doesn't cause market movements, although you could actually maybe argue that it does, but not to such a great extent as buying it. Um, exchange traded derivatives still have that good governance structure. I mean, so you will have comfort and security as an investor because they are exchange traded. So the JSC takes care of you. There's things like margining to reduce credit risk and trade guarantees. So it is a safe way to put your money. There is lots of liquidity, lots of people uh, buying these things, especially with the popular contracts. 
but they do lack flexibility. So they will also have, there'll be limited exchange traded derivatives, which means there actually is a third thing that you can do. You can do an over-the-counter derivative. So I don't know if you guys have watched this movie, The Big Short. Uh, it's talking about the world recession and all these type of things. This character over here, I forget his name, he goes to the banks. Okay, so not to the exchange, he goes to the banks and he creates an over-the-counter derivative. Okay, this gives him great flexibility in the sense that he can get the exposure to the mortgage-backed securities and he can tailor the, the contract to, to suit his needs. So he could have the custom index, custom constituents, a custom terms. The problem though is buying this type of derivative does give him exposure to counterparty risk. If he had bought it with say Lehman Brothers and Lehman Brothers goes bang, then tough luck, he actually doesn't get the money even though he makes the right call. So there is that additional risk with going over the counter because a bank can fail. Where the JSC can also fail, but they're more protected and they've got more you know, stuff going on. But one of the biggest risks with over-the-counter derivatives is if you make a mistake, okay, and you want to get out of that position. I don't know if you guys saw the movie, um, you know, his partners were telling him, get out, get out, you've, you've made the wrong thing, you know, liquidate the position. He actually couldn't because, well, he could, but it would have been very, very expensive to try and switch that contract around by taking the opposite one out. He would have drowned himself in fees, and so it would be very, very expensive to unwind an over-the-counter derivative before it's due. Exchange traded funds, if you make a mistake, you just take out a counter thing and you can quickly switch out. Over-the-counters does not give you that liquidity. So it is quite an interesting um, decision and you have to think about what are your needs before determining whether we should go to an exchange traded derivative, an over-the-counter derivative or an exchange traded fund. But anyway, I'll put the link to this, this little website below and you guys feel free to come check it out and you know, click on the low volatility one. Maybe should we do that? Let's, let's look at one more. Let's look at the low volatility one. This one should perform better than the other ones given the bad uh, situation. Oh, no, they didn't. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I'll let you guys come to this website and play around with it. These are the ex South African exchange trader funds. Um, if you're in America, you will have a more sophisticated market, you will have more options uh, and things like that. But what is cool about these things is that it does give South Africans a way to purchase into the world. Although they are being offered by Deutsche Bank, who are in trouble at the moment, um, currently facing like a $14 billion fine or something huge like that, uh, funnily enough, relating to the events that was happening in this movie. So if you want a study break and you want to still study while you're relaxing, go watch this movie. It's a must-see for all you wannabe actors out there. But anyway, thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time with another video. Cheers.